President Trump announcing today that he will pardon conservative commentator and filmmaker Dinesh D'Souza for a campaign finance violation. He's considering doing the same for Martha Stewart and commuting the sentence of former Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich. But what about first-time drug offenders like Matthew Charles, who we have covered, and Alice Johnson, whose case brought Kim Kardashian to the White House. Thomas Dupre is the former Deputy Assistant Attorney General under President George W. Bush. And rumors are uh, that Matthew Charles's case, at least, and probably Alice Johnson's, is uh, out there in the universe uh, at the White House. And so perhaps we'll get news on that as well. But in the meantime, Tom, let me just ask you about this. Look at the president's timeline of the pardon so far during his administration, um, starting early on in August of 2017 with uh, uh, Sheriff Arpaio. Um, and then moving on down to, of course, Lewis Libby, uh, Scooter Libby, being probably the most prominent one in April 13th. Um, then the posthumous pardon of Jack Johnson, May 24th, and today with Dinesh D'Souza. Tell me a little bit about the timeline and how this works, um, it, just the process of it, because there is a pardon attorney at the Justice Department, but as I understand, one of the things Dinesh D'Souza has told the Daily Caller is that he appreciates President Trump's gut sense of justice and that other administrations would have had endless meetings, but that President Trump just does it. How does it actually work? Yeah, and, and Dana, I got to say, this is another example of uh, this, this administration not necessarily following the path that was blazed by prior administrations. President Trump wants to do this his own way, and that's exactly what he's doing. Typically, when you apply for a pardon, it can be a multi-year process that, revol that involves an extensive vetting by Justice Department attorneys who specialize in this. What the president is doing here, at least in his initial pardons, is acting when he personally feels that there has been a great and manifest injustice. He's not taking the time and following the lengthy, elaborate procedures that normally are applied in the pardon context, but he's acting to remedy when he thinks injustice uh, has occurred and is required to be corrected. So really, a president can just say, you're pardoned, and, and then that's it? The, the Constitution gives the president pretty much limitless authority to issue these types of pardons. There are guidelines in the Justice Department for how the process should work, but at the end of the day, these are advisory. They are mm -hmm. intended to enable Justice Department lawyers to make a recommendation to the president. They don't have to be followed. There's no remedy if you think the president didn't follow the proper procedure. He can basically do what he wants in the sphere of pardons. Yeah, you don't even have to be contrite, uh, certainly. Um, Preet Bahara, who was the prosecutor, the U.S. attorney that prosecuted D'Souza, wrote this on Twitter, the president has the right to pardon, but the facts are these. D'Souza intentionally broke the law, voluntarily pled guilty, apologized for his conduct, and the judge found no unfairness. The career prosecutors and agents did their job, period. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, it, look, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, one thing you sometimes see play out in the pardon process is you have a sense from the prosecutors who actually tried the case and obtained the conviction that a pardon is not warranted because there was no injustice here. Um, I think prosecutors also sometimes feel, and I don't necessarily know that it's the case here, but they feel that pardons are issued as a way of giving out political favors. We saw that, as you know, at the end of the Clinton administration, where Bill Clinton was doling out pardons like party favors to his friends and to his contributors. So I think you often do see a little pushback in the prosecutorial realm when you see a president exercising his pardon authority, and that's natural, and frankly, it's, it's expected. Is it possible, I suppose, that, you know, President Obama did some blanket party, like a whole group of people were pardoned during his administration. I guess that is possible, too, with, in this administration. You just never know what you're going to wake up to. Uh, any thoughts on that in the last 20 seconds or so that we have? Yeah, I, and I think that's the interesting question here, is we've seen the president exercise his pardon authority in the context of these high-profile celebrity cases. The big question is whether he is going to start extending grants of pardons to a broader group of people, ordinary people who we may not have heard of.